last week on The Pulse. The stuff that really makes you a really good player is the stuff you do during the week, so um, just all that preparation. And it's like all odds are against you, and you kind of just all you have is your teammate to lean on. And that's really what it comes down to in the game and as a whole thing. On a third and eight from the Ole Miss 18 yard line. Here, they come. Here comes pressure. Kellen throws left side. Rodgers caught it. Touchdown. SEC road win, so it's time for some home cooking and for the Aggies to enjoy the fruits of their labor. This right here, that's how you do it. Let's go sit down. We got the steak, we got the honey chicken, we got the snow crab, we got the potatoes. You gotta get a little salad for your grand. He ain't gonna finish that, no. He ain't gonna finish that. He don't got it. He ain't no big dog. Hey, that's that, that's that good steak right there. We got it good today. Well done. Real good. Yes, sir. Let me go ahead and get a piece. I don't get no vegetables, man. You got to get the carbs. <laughs> Where's the rest of all these stats? I took them all. No, RJ White probably took all the crap out. Go like that. Go like this up. Dang, go like this. You gotta make sure this is out. You gotta crack it. Soft, like that. Like that. I don't know what happened to the rest of it, man. Pull it out. What? Did you crack it? Yeah, chicken, honey style. Mm -hmm. Cookies and cream, man, you know what I'm saying? You know how we do it. Three scoops, I don't get two, I get three, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All fun aside, this team's nutrition and performance is a serious matter. Transformations have been made to the Davis Player Development Center. This program continues to raise the bar. It's like with Coach Fisher, I mean, he wanted the best. I mean, in every area, he wants it to be the best. And um, he said, what do you need, you know, and to, to make your area the best? You know, the, with the re renovations and everything like that we have now, we have a pretty top-notch, you know, development center, you know. Yeah, the turf and just the kitchen that we can make our smoothies in. And it's, it's kind of relaxing, got chairs set out and everything like that. So, you know, if you want to just sit up and relax and they're at the workout, you know, you can do that. It's a really nice spot. When Coach Smith first got here, he felt like there was something missing. But when he got here, you know, we have all the great resources in the world. He got here, he asked for what he wanted, and he got it. We wanted to bring the great players into Texas A&M. We wanted to make them even better. So how can we do that? Well, we needed to add technology to it. And uh, our room is the best in the country to do that with the technology that we have put in. Inside the cozy confines of the Davis Center, workouts with Jerry Schmidt are anything but. He's worked with and coached lifetime legends. In a short time in Aggieland, he's building this team for long-lasting success. It's relentlessness. There's a picture, a passion, and a way to do things. His, he has great knowledge of what he does. He has great passion. And Jerry has a really good niche, in my opinion, of really being hard and demanding, but can relate to the kids at the same time. They respond to him. I mean, he has that niche, and he's extremely knowledgeable. I mean, he's he back with them great teams in Notre Dame, great teams in Florida, great teams in Oklahoma. Listen, he's trained the best of the best, and they have gotten them there. That's, that's a great thing for our kids. Okay, who have you trained? Well, oh, yeah, all those guys you want to be. But the thing is, we can have the best, but if they don't have the mindset of coming in, um, and, and it is the best, the Davis Center is the best, but they've got to want to put the work into it. And that comes down to the athletes that you recruit and that you get in here. And... Uh, They've got the resource to do it. Now it's time to come together as a team and to, uh, and to work their tail off.
some of the most significant strides have been made by linebacker Aaron Hansford. His A&M career started on offense and mired by injury. Healthy now, he stepped over to the other side. I've had him at my rack. I mean, like I said, I've got five guys. and I normally give each coach two racks, which would be six guys, you know, and we try to keep the group smaller, you know, And uh, but he's always been at my rack. And, you know, I was pulling my hair out when I first got here. I mean, like, dude, you got so much talent, you know what I mean? But it took time. It took him a while to get it. But now he's kind of like, he's seeing the, the benefits of doing things the right way, you know what I mean? So, and, he, and he's just getting better and better every day. He's got a smile on his face now. To me, that's why you get into coaching, to see guys like Aaron, how far he's come. Tua fakes the handoff, rolls to his right, and Aaron Hansford has him back at the 15-yard line. That's 10-yard sack. He was coming on the blitz, got a quick path to Tua, and held on, kept him from escaping, and he'll take him down back at the 15-yard line. Great job, defense. The, the 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 180 he's made as a person, you know, from just it was it was hard from when he was injured, and you know he he slacked off a little bit and. You know, it was tough for him, I understand. But then once he was able to just re re-identify himself with who he is and what type of player he is, he's made a, he's he's made tremendous strides. It was hard. <laughs> Being hurt for that long was very hard for me just because there wasn't a guarantee that I was gonna be okay. Um, I was trying to be as optimistic as possible and keep positive energy around me, but you know, in the back of your head you just don't know how the recovery is going to be, especially doing rehab and then trying to get back onto the field and play at a high level again. So it was tough on me mentally and physically. Um, the mental part was trying to switch positions during my rehab part uh, of my recovery. And it just, it, it was tough, but you know, it's showing a lot of progress now and I'm glad I made that choice. I was just thinking like, what do I want to do when I get back? Where do I see my career going? And I know that from experience of playing defense that I was able to do that at a high level in high school. Um, so I kind of just, when I started to get back healthy, I just took a chance and said, I'm gonna try and go play defense again. Uh, so when spring ball came around, I had asked Coach Fisher if that was possible and he made that happen. The Pulse Texas A&M football is brought to you by Gritty. It's a whole new way to buy power. And Pepsi, the official soft drink of Texas A&M football. Howdy, Ags. So glad that you are with us. We start in the morning on this Saturday into a glorious Saturday afternoon. No better place to be than right here in Aggieland as the fighting Texas Aggies at 4-3 and three and 2-2 two and two in the SEC play host to the Mississippi State Bulldogs 3-4 and four and 1-3. And it's time to go play football, okay? You got to play a complete football game, offense, defense, and special teams. One play at a time and taking care of your business and execute. Not having the ups and downs, not having the doubts. Screw your cleats in the ground, put your hand in the dirt, come off the football, put your face and hands on them guys, and let's go play. Let's cover them, let's block them, let's tackle them, let's throw, catch, get open, break tackles, whatever we got to do. Sack them, do the things you got to do. Play smart, intelligent football. Play hard football. Don't worry about what could have been and understand what's going to happen. A&M strikes first. The defense takes their cue and gets in on the action. Third and 10 from the Aggie 47. Schrader looking right, back over the middle. Flushed by Matabike, right into PB. The pass is complete. No, the pass is picked. The pass is intercepted. Devin Morris. Kick from Caldwell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Slant, Q, caught, avoids a tackler, cuts to his left, to the 25, spins to the 23-yard line, a 21-yard gain. Osmond and Rodgers left, give to Isaiah Spiller, no, keeper by Kellen on the left side, Kellen Bond, touchdown! He faked it to Spiller, partner, what did I tell you? around the what left, did I tell you? 12-yard touchdown run. The way they're pursuing, they're going for Spiller. Mississippi State finds the end zone but gets their momentum taken away soon after. Kellen takes the snap. Fake, throw, cue with the catch. 35-40 by the Aggie sideline. To the 45-yard line, a 10-yard gain. The snap to Kellen. Looking right. Throws right. Complete. Middle of the field inside the hashes. And first down distance all the way across the 30 to the 29 is Courtney Davis. Two to the right, Kellen looking, flush, Kellen running left side and a lot of room, 20, 10, left side, tackle at the four yard line, and a flag. That's going to be targeting, we got a lot of laundry off the field here now. 26 yard run by Kellen. There was no targeting on the play. The 15 yard unsportsmanlike conduct foul at number 76 will be enforced. So since the targeting's taken away, it's just the personal foul, and Colton Crater moves this ball back to the Mississippi State 19-yard line. Spiller is behind Bond in the pistol. Fake to him, Kellen, pocket, throws over the middle, end zone, touchdown! Aggies! Oh, that is Javon Osmond from 19! Great protection by the offensive line. Kellen sits in the pocket and throws it perfectly. The defense has some bite to it against the Bulldogs. And they keep throwing the offense a bone. Here come the Aggies. Schrader flush to the right. Tripped down. And he fumbled the ball forward. He is down. Devin Morris with the sack. He's having a big day already. He hits the INT Man. and a sack. Schrader give to Nick Gibson up the middle. Met by Anthony Hines. He slips past him. Fumble. The ball is loose. It's down at the 20-yard line. And the Aggies fall on it. Fumble recovery by... Texas A&M! Three on the play clock. Snap to Kellen. Pressure coming up the middle. Throw slant. Caught by Kendrick. Inside the 10. Still going to the 7. No, he's not down yet. He's in the end zone for a touchdown. He yes. never touched the ground. Kept his balance. Spun. Put his hand down. Went into the end zone. Touchdown, Aggies. Hey! That's what he's talking about right there, DK. The Aggies, dominant in the opening half, take a 28-10 lead to the break. Right, and we decide. We don't let up right now. We pour. Stay fundamentally sound. I need all y'all. We need all y'all. You understand? Play smart football. Play to win. Don't let up nothing. Fit them runs. Make them plays. You know they're going to be desperate. Watch an onside to start the half right here. Play great offense. We got to go out and get points right here off the board. Go right. out and take control of the game, get points, pound that sucker down the field. That's rock and roll a little bit. You understand what I'm saying? Let's get ready to rock and roll. Let's lock into what we do. Defense, they don't score, we win, baby. Fast. Let's go rock and roll. Fast. Fast. Let's, Let's go, go man. It's on up. Keep working. Hey. Let's go. Hey, finish on three. One, two, three. Finish. Coming out for the second half, the Aggies look to one of their young pups to stay out ahead of the Bulldogs. Here comes Mississippi State, Kellen with a keeper. He's going to throw, that's complete. Wadermeyer's first catch, across the 40, still on his feet, 30, steps inside, 20. He's going to go into the end zone. Wadermeyer, touchdown, Aggies, 52 yards. Wadermeyer, wow. He first of all, he gets open. Good break execution by Kellen, delivers, but he breaks tackles all the way down the field. That was, that was impressive. Woo! The Aggies are in control, but these dogs still have some fight left in them. Second and five, keeper Schrader around the left side, and he'll slide to the 42-yard line. 
0 for 6 on third downs. Fake to Hill. Swing right side. Caught by Dedrick Thomas into Aggie territory. At the 40 to the 35. Cuts back. He's got the first down and much, much more. All the way to the 30. A 25-yard gain. Takes the snap. Looking right. Here comes Chapman. The throw is caught. At the 14-yard line by Dedrick Thomas. 14-yard gain. Third and 10 from the Aggie 14-yard line. Trips left. Schrader, pocket, Schrader, short, Zuber on the left side and around and into the end zone. 14-yard touchdown pass, Isaiah Zuber. As the second half moves on, some back and forth starts up. Kellen has pressure from his right, goes over the middle, Javon with a catch to the 40-yard line and across the 40 to the 41. A stab to Kellen, Isaiah, fake to him, keep left side, Kellen across the 35, Kellen steps out of bounds at the 31-yard line for a 15-yard gain. Pass, Weidemeyer, five deflected and into the hands of Kendrick Rogers to the 24-yard line. Weidemeyer won to catch it, it came out of his hands, but Kellen right to Kendrick. I wonder how long they've been working on that one. Third and four for the Mississippi State 24. Kellen pocket slant caught to the 10-yard line. Javon inside the 10 to the 8. Isaiah right side dances back to the left and into the end zone. Four-yard touchdown. Isaiah Spiller and touchdown Aggies. I got to tell you, he just keeps getting better. He sprinted out to the sweep, and then he cut it up. Nobody ever touched him on his way to the touchdown. Tylen Hill with a big run for Mississippi State before Clipper Chapman drags him out, but not before he gets to the Aggie 26-yard line. Schrader with a keeper around the right side gets to the 15, and he's taken down by Damani Richardson, but he has the first down as he gets to the Aggie 13-yard line. Schrader fakes the handoff to Hill, swings left side, Dedrick Thomas, and he is tackled, falls ahead to the 9-yard line. Up the middle, Hill. Did he lose the football? No, he got in. He crossed the over. lane and stretched it over that goal line for a touchdown. But AM's had enough of this business. They start the process of putting this one away. Low snap to Schrader. Looking downfield over the middle. That's complete. Stephen Gidry tackles to the right side to the 40 yard line. He gets that 41 and he fumbled the football. Picked up by the Aggies at the 42. Turnover. Aggies have it. Get another one. That's their third of the day. Miles Jones stripped him. Keldrick Harper with the fumble recovery. On a third and four, Kellen with the keeper. Tucks it under his left arm. Gets around the left side of the first down before he gets out of bounds at the 30. Keeper, Kellen rolls to the left. Kellen's got a run. Avoids a rusher. Gets across the 20. Falls out of bounds at the 17-yard line. Seven-yard gain for Kellen. More importantly, a first down on a first and 10. Cordarian bounces to the left side. Angle stays on his feet to the 10-yard line. Drives that pile to the five. Richardson, right side, Richardson, falls into the end zone for a touchdown, Aggies! Aggies 49, Mississippi State 30, that's the final for Kyle Field. Back-to-back -back wins for the Aggies. They're five and three, and three and two in the SEC. The Pulse Texas A&M football is brought to you by Gritty. It's a whole new way to buy power, and Pepsi the official soft drink of Texas A&M football. The Magnolia State is no longer a thorn in their side. The Aggies sweep the Mississippi schools as they top state 49 to 30. 
congratulations. A great win. It's an SEC win at home. Uh, big win. Puts over the hunt. Gets on the upper side of three and two in the league. Got still got hope. Just keep playing ball. You guys don't know what happened. Just keep playing ball each and every week. We asked you to get better this week. We got better. Did some things. Uh, defensively, uh, they moved the ball a little bit, but we got three huge turnovers to set them up. Devin, that's one of the best picks I think I've ever seen. That was the head of a pick. We got through strip at the end. You guys made opportunistic plays. Offensively, you took advantage of things. You took, you took those turnovers. You turned them into points. You're great on third down. Our defense, we got to get some things ironed out and a couple big plays on some things. But listen, guys, nobody's ever playing. Offense, we got we, could have, we had a drive down there. We had to have to get a punt, and we could have done that. But offensively, I thought we controlled the ball, had good balance. Killing, us, killing and uh, running, I thought you made great decisions all night long, putting us in the right plays, doing the right things, run pass options, pulling it. We ran the ball with authority. Offensive line did a great job, protected well, picked up blitzes. We made plays down the field receiver wise, tight ends, everybody. Yeah, that was a complete game. Punting and kicking. I did a good job in the kicking game for the most part, and, and the return we'll keep looking at it, but got better. We asked you to get better. Guys, all you do is just keep sawing wood getting better. Just keep sawing wood getting better. Just keep sawing wood getting better. Keep sawing wood. All of a sudden, you're a heck of a football team. You don't even realize it. Put your head down. Don't worry about what the outcomes are. Don't worry about the end of the tunnel. Just work. Just go to work. Like you said, when you put when you push the rock to the top of the hill, push it back down so you got to push it again. It's the grind in the process that you got to live through and you got to believe in. Just got to keep doing things. Made plays across the field in all three phases. That's a good win. Okay? And you learn to keep stretching it. And you come out the second half, you started fast, did the things you had to do. Very proud of you, okay? Now, what we got to do now, go back and fix the things that were wrong, keep doing the things we're right, getting better at, and then go play next week, get better and better. Then we'll get an off week, then we'll get heel up, and uh, get better that week, and then go play our last three games of the year. Good football teams, man, just keep sawing wood. Just keep sawing wood and keep playing, doing what you're doing. Very proud of you. Learning how to practice and prepare. Now, this week here, you got to grind, man. We've got to grind and lock in, get everything on time. So we can go play UTSA next week and play our tails off. It doesn't matter. It's how we play. That was the standard. we got to play, play well, okay? The season is a grind, but keep chipping away and see where you are when the dust settles. For me, when he says keep sawing wood, I, uh, I would just think that think, think of it as a, just keep working, just keep going, you know. The job's not finished, you know. Uh, let's keep building on, you know, what we're trying to do for the season. We've got some great momentum going on at this point. And I feel like at this point, he was trying to get across. So, you know, just keep working. Don't get complacent. We still have an uh, overall goal that we're trying to meet, you know, by the end of the season. And we have a chance to meet that goal. And another week brings a new opportunity. The way we played, the way we practiced, can we practice even better? Can we play with more consistency? Can we play with more focus? This hits a, you have a milestone for a goal here, you have a winning season, you have goal eligibility. That's one of your goals and what you check off and where you want to go. There's things in front of you you have to keep accomplishing, and you got to do them one at a time, one week at a time. Nothing more matters than this game with UTSA this week and how we prepare, how we practice, and practicing getting in the mindset to prepare to play the best we can play and then go play the best we can play.